Now, uh, let's go to Ben Cohen. He's a journalist with the Algeminer and a writer and thinker who has been a leading fighter against the demonization of Israel. Greetings to the UN Watch panel. I'm Ben Cohen and I'm a journalist uh, in New York. My question to you is this. The mid-1970s is a time when the United Nations General Assembly decides that Zionism is a form of racism and it creates this uh, division for Palestinian rights, this entire infrastructure within the UN that engages in Palestinian propaganda. Uh, four decades on, it's still there. Why? Ben? You mentioned the infrastructure of anti-Israeli propaganda. You're quite right. Let me spell it out a little bit. The UN has a 25-nation committee on the exercise of the inalienable rights of the Palestinian people. This is the only human rights committee of the General Assembly that is devoted to a single cause. Its reports turn a blind eye to Palestinian terrorism against Israeli civilians. Its mandate concerns only Israeli actions, and it is inherently prejudiced and one-sided. Now, the UN Secretariat that does the work for this committee is called the Division for Palestinian Rights. It has a 15-member staff at UN headquarters dedicated to spreading anti-Israel propaganda at conferences held around the globe. The UN's Palestinian division is grossly disproportionate to the organization's other four staff divisions, which cover enormous geographical regions. Instead of seeking bridges for peace, the UN's Palestinian Committee and its division seek to coordinate international boycotts against Israel. Any NGO, like UN Watch, that declines to sign a declaration of loyalty to their agenda is banned from participation in their meetings and events. Now, as documented, as documented on our database, the UN's anti-Israel infrastructure includes much more. There are some 20 resolutions every year at the UN General Assembly. The Human Rights Council agenda item singles out Israel, one-sided resolutions, commissions of inquiry, a special rapporteur on Palestine who investigates Israel only, not Hamas. Then you have the World Health Organization. An annual resolution is adopted every year at the WHO condemning Israel alone on health rights. And you have similar bias at UNESCO and other UN bodies. Now, you asked why. Now, the resolutions are introduced by the Palestinians with the Arab and Islamic groups but why do so many countries support it? Well, let's take a look. First, there's vote trading. There are 56 Islamic states and only one Jewish state. That's 56 to one. Then, I mean, that's a major factor at the UN, vote trading. Then you have money. There are billions of dollars in sovereign wealth funds that the Islamic states have, and they will either invest it in your country or not, depending on how you vote at the UN. So we talked about vote trading, money, then there's oil. Vast reserves of oil in the Arab world historically was used as a weapon to pressure countries to vote for them at the UN. If you don't vote for us, you don't get oil. Finally, I'll mention two other factors. Fear of terrorism. Countries were afraid that if they were some of the few countries not to vote for UN resolutions against Israel, they might be targeted by terrorists. And all of these factors are realpolitik. You may not like it, but vote trading, money, oil, fear of terrorism, that is practical interest and reality. And you can understand how countries may vote that way, but I'd say there's another factor. When countries vote against Israel, I don't see all of them being forced to do so because of these uh, pragmatic interests. Some of them seem rather content to single out Israel. And I have to say that when we think of the Middle Ages, when there was the plague, it was the Jews who poisoned the wells. And today, when we have human rights abuses around the world, and Israel is pointed is the one that's pointed to as the arch human rights violator. It seems that Israel is treated as the Jew among the nations, which we would call the new form of anti-Semitism. I think that's another factor that we cannot dismiss.